Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Emir Bari, Assistant Professor of Dentistry uh, and a member of the International Collaboration Committee at Galala University. I welcome you all uh, in our webinar. Uh, there is a wide range of academic exchange and two-way mutual benefit initiatives with Japan and Egypt. The two countries are always searching for opportunities to promote friendship and mutual understanding. Both countries foster a spirit of international cooperation. One of the leading high potential sectors for them is the educational sector. Foster a spirit. Consider that Japan is one of the leading countries in the educational reform out of this remarkable transitional sector that Japan has witnessed and Galela University's mission to continue to establish long-term cooperation agreements with the most reputable educational institutions worldwide. Under the patronage of Professor Ashraf Haider, acting president of Galela University, and Professor Tari Abul Maati, acting vice president for academic affairs, Galela University, and Professor Mohammed Shinnawi, acting vice president for international collaboration, environmental development, and community service, Galala University is pleased to be hosting a webinar in partnership with one of the top-ranked prestigious universities, Kyushu University in Japan, to discuss the future cooperation methods in terms of research topics, summer training programs, and student exchange programs. So I want to welcome you all, and I'm grateful for all the professors uh, of Kyushu University who accepted, who kindly accepted our invitation to join our webinar today under the title of Internationalize Yourself and Explore Japan. And really, it's our honor that uh, Vice President of Kyushu University Professor Kono, Kono Sensei, has kindly accepted our invitation. So, uh, we have a, a program uh, from esteemed professors and speakers from Egypt and uh, Kyushu University, Japan, and from Galala University. And now we will start our webinar with a speech from Professor Mohammed Shinnawi acting Vice President for International Affairs to give an introduction about Galala University and a welcome speech to all the guests from Galala University and from outside Galala University and of course for Kyushu University. To you, Professor Mohammed Shinnawi. Thank you so much, Professor Temer. And I think before I give my speech, I ask Dr. Ashraf Haider, the President of GU, if you would like to give a welcome note before I start. Yes, sure. Uh, Either, please, to you. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would uh, like to thank all our Japanese uh, friends and partners at uh, Kyushu University uh, to have you in the uh, uh, beginning of this uh, uh, collaboration and uh, communication. Uh, I hope through our um, uh, professors and with your professors, we'll be able uh, to uh, establish a strong relationship that has been already uh, strong for a long time with the Japanese government as well as the Egyptian government. And I think uh, there's a lot of um, activities that we could uh, work on, uh, particularly staff exchange, uh, student exchange research, that's very important. Internationalizing our curriculum is a very important issue because our goal and strategy of Galala University is to have our graduates um, be able to work all over the world uh, to be competitive in the work job market. And I think uh, this is a very, very important uh, meeting and workshop. I uh, hope it will be very fruitful. And uh, I will enjoy uh, following you. We thank uh, the vice president uh, uh, of the university to join us. And uh, it's a great honor to have all the eminent uh, professors and associates uh, on this uh, uh, webinar. And uh, uh, from our side, uh, Dr. Mohammed Shinawi will continue. 
and I will be uh, following. And uh, of course, I hope you record this um, uh, discussions in order to put it down in documents. And of course, at certain time, we'll be able to um, uh, establish a memorandum of understanding. Uh, we thank Dr. Tamer for the initiation of the um, uh, the uh, communication with you, and uh, we are looking forward for a very strong uh, partnership. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, sir. And let me start by thanking uh, Professor Ashraf Ghalib, President of Galala University, dear Professor Kono, Executive Vice President of Kyushu University, Professor Gadel Adi, President of the National Research Institute of Astronomy and Geophysics. I would like to start off by thanking you all for being here today with a special thanks to our esteemed colleagues from Kyushu University of Japan and the JMENA project. Egypt and Japan have long enjoyed political ties and over time have expanded their relationship to a partnership centered around culture, academia and trade. It's our hope here at Galala University, both at, as individual institution and as a part of the larger network of national universities, to foster that relationship of academia with Japanese institutions. Therefore, it came as no surprise than him, that when it was time to start creating these relationships, an esteemed institution such as Kyoshu came to mind. One of the core functionalities of the internationalization of an institution is to create a more complex network of knowledge, research, and technique, utilizing the experiences of one another to build something that's greater. We are looking forward to opening such channels of exchange and collaboration with Kyushu and hope that today's webinar will bring exposure and build a basis for the future relationship between our two institutions. And allow me now to share with you some uh, uh, information about Galala University. And please, I'll be sharing my screen and just inform me that you can see my screen. Can you see, you see my screen now? Not yet, uh, Professor Jeanette, uh, waiting for your screen. Yes, I can see. You can yes. see? Yes, now it's here. It's here. Yeah. Perfect. So I can start. Put it, put it full screen, please. I'll do so. Is it clear now? Yes. So let's make, let me take you in a tour in our new big university. I would call that we are the youngest university now in Egypt, but we consider ourselves as one of the most optimistic and um, big universities. We were built big and we hope to be like that. Galala University was integrated in 2020 in a big project uh, that Egypt is uh, taking care of under the patronage of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi, we were integrated in 2020 in a big project that includes four uh, national, new national universities that started this year, and there is another 15 to join within the upcoming three years. We are located around 100 kilometers east of uh, the capital Cairo, in the marvelous city of Galala, in the governorate of Suez on the Red Sea. The university is built to accommodate 25,000 students. Now we have around 1,200 students. We opened our admission for the second semester, and we hope by next year to double this to have 4,000 students. Who we are? Actually, we hope that we will be one of the leading universities, not only locally or regionally, but internationally. And our aim is to contribute to the latest in research, education, 
and that our alumni and staff will be recognized internationally. Connecting all universities to serve the industry, and this is one of our crucial um, points that we are working on through networks, mentoring, and entrepreneurship. This is our university, and this was the first batch of students when we were doing for them a welcome party. And we always say that future starts in Galala. The fields of study that we have is different fields of study, including humanities, media production, engineering, and on the other side, medicine, dental medicine, physical therapy, applied health, nursing, architecture. So you can find all the disciplinaries are found in Galala University. And we are based in programs rather than schools. This is our organizational structure where the autonomy of the university is crucial, where we have the board of trustees, the president, the vice presidents, and all the staff and administration in the university. Our strategic goals are around efficiency, communication, local, regional, and global influence, quality, which is extremely crucial for us, leadership, and what we are doing now, partnership. And partnership with the universities that have the same ideas and same uh, background and the same uh, strategy like ours. So that's why Kyushu was one of the first to do this webinar. We are a smart university with our infrastructure, with our innovative concepts. Hope once this pandemic is over that we will have you here in GU, Galala University, visiting to see the smart classrooms, the smart methodology on our teaching, our uh, different branches of computer science, artificial intelligence, and the smart software and hardware system that we are using here in our university. But we are not only focusing on education. Research is a core for us. And within three years, inshallah, we will be having our Academy of Science at Galala, where we'll be having Faculty of Postgraduate Studies, Center of Excellence, and Technology Valley. And these are the disciplines that we are hoping we'll have and establish in the academy. And these were chosen according to the studies that were done in Egypt and in the region and globally, talking about water, integrated strategic systems, artificial intelligence, big data, renewable energy, agriculture, bioinformatics, and all of these disciplines, which are crucial for the local uh, market and the needs, and also the regional and international. About my sector, which is international cooperation, community service, and environmental development, we are putting our future vision where we divide it into, into different aspects, where we are working from day zero an individual to have a common universal language, partnership with different uh, bodies here in Egypt, like Erasmus, USAID, JICA, DAD, change of students, established research projects. In institutionally, we started to make some university affiliation, signing memorandum of understandings, thinking about new programs to add, and providing visitor professors to our university. Governmental, we are adapting Egypt Vision 2030, and we are trying to make our university a hub to serve the region and in line with state policy. Regionally, we have a good, very good cooperation with the UNESCO office here, and we had yesterday the um, executive director of UNESCO presenting in Galala University, Union for Mediterranean and the Arab Middle and Eastern countries. On a continent level, we are adapting Africa Strategy 2063, and we already started negotiations with some of the African universities to have exchange of students. And of course, internationally, we are trying to create opportunities for international exchange with high quality institutes like Kyosho and others. But we know we have to have steady steps to achieve our goals. That's why we are putting in our first year, our target is to finalize our agreements, to have our stuff completed, then establish our dual degrees and our new projects to finally have a lot of number of publications and patencies. We are not only seeking for publications, 
not only the number, but the number, quality, and we are aiming to have what's called translational research, aiming for higher technology readiness level coming out from our publications. And we're putting our development, we are always saying it CDCS, Conduct Pioneer High Quality Research, develop programs to prepare our students, create opportunities, and then strengthen and disseminate our strengths on the international stage. Those are some of our partners that we already had been speaking with for more than one and a half years, including Arizona State, Vienna University and Hiroshima University in Japan, and we hope that Kyushu University also will be one of our partners. As regards the sector of community service and environmental development, we are supervising the development and environmental projects, and already we started the sustainability office, and we are in contact with the Ministry of Environment to have our share because we are in a new city, so we hope that will be an ad for this city, linking our students with the industry and the community, have such webinars and scientific seminars and putting strategy and operational plan for self resources. I will take you through some of our activities that we have done in the last two months. We had more than six or seven webinars with the World Bank, with the UK, with the United States, we are having this one with Japan. We have an extra six upcoming webinars with the World Bank. We are working very hard on the sustainability. We, we had a very good workshop a few days ago about sustainability and developing and adapting the 17 goals of sustainable development goals and making sure that these SDGs are included in our curriculum for all our students to be aware about it and also to make our faculty speaking the same language, because we have aimed to be a green university. We are going digital, trying to reduce our energy consumption, saving water, sharing, and reuse before recycling. And actually, we are signing a lot of memorandums with many of the organizations here in Egypt to help in going green university, like the closing bank to help our students to know how to share in the community and at the same time use this idea of recycling. Also, some of our activities as regards awareness, we had one of the pioneers uh, of the tennis table and uh, to teach our students how to be engaged. And we hope that this champion will be in Tokyo 2021 in the Paralympics. This is an, another awareness campaign that we did about breast cancer and health checkup convoy. Another one about COVID-19 awareness campaigns. We are linking our students to the industry. This is a visit from some of our students to one of the prosthesis manufacturing uh, um, factories near us. But we are not only doing that, but we are trying also to offer our students scholarships and funds to be sure that we are reaching all the uh, levels uh, in Egypt and outside. These are some of the scholarships that we are offering from Solid Trade and one of the Egyptians who are living in the UK, one of the banks in Egypt and another bank in Egypt. This is our small history in three months that we hope that we will continue our uh, work and uh, continue our cooperation with all the universities all around. Thank you, and back to you, Dr. Tamer. I know that I have to finish at 9.30. I finished at 9.25 as I planned. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Professor Shinawi, so much for your uh, nice speech. It's our pleasure. And now it's uh, my honor to give the speech to Professor Kono Tishuki, Executive Vice President of Kyushu University in Japan. He will give a speech uh, introducing Kyushu University. To you, Professor Kono. Kono Sensei. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Sensei, we could hear you. And, yes. uh, can, can you see my uh, slide? Yes, Dozo. Please. Okay. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you. First of all, uh, thank you very much for um, organizing this webinar and then inviting me as a presenter. Uh, my name is uh, Toshiyuki Kono. Um, I am the, the executive uh, vice president for international affairs, and I'm very pleased to um, present uh, my university to all attendants uh, webinar today. But before I start, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to uh, organizers at the Galala University, um, especially Professor Ashraf Haider, acting president of Galala University, and Professor Mohammed uh, El Shinawi, acting vice president of Galala University for International Affairs, and um, the Professor Tarek Abel Mati, acting vice president of Galala University, and Assistant Professor Tamil Badawi for organizing this webinar. Um, let me move to the next slide. Yes, so this is the um, uh, very um, brief uh, overview um, of uh, Kyushu University. Um, Kyushu University was founded in 1911 as one of the seven imperial that, universities. There is no slides. Konu Sensei, ah. can you share your slides with us, please? Wait a minute. Um, I try to... Can you see it? You can't see it? Uh, not it's yet. not clear yet. Let me start from the beginning. Um, let me try again. Yes, Sensei, we could see your slide clearly now. Okay, um, so I try to make it um, um, a little bigger. Can you see it? Yes, yes, Professor Kono, please start. Okay, um, so this is the brief overview of Kyushu University. Um, the Kyushu University was founded uh, as Kyushu, Kyushu Imperial University, one of the seven imperial universities in 1911. And uh, it was renamed as Kyushu University in 1947. And we merged a Kyushu, Kyushu Institute of Design in 2003. So we are the one, um, the very few um, universities in Japan, uh, or um, actually with, a, with the Faculty of uh, Technology and Design. In 2004, we became a national university corporation because of the change of uh, uh, the national university system in Japan. And uh, in 2011, we celebrated its centennial. Um, as you see, uh, we have um, 12 undergraduate schools and 18 graduate schools. And we have totally uh, in roughly 20 southern students and over 2,000 faculty members. And if you count uh, staff members, uh, um, you, could add, you could add maybe um, a few thousands more to this figure. So I move to the next slides. I hope it works. Can you see it? Yes, Professor Kono. Kono should okay. it's OK. Thank yes, you. Yes, we can see, but uh, please um, make it data show. Slideshow, bigger size. Bigger size, I hope. Big. To me, it, it, let's see. Is it still small? Yes, because uh, we can see on the right, uh, we can see your desktop. So we can see a, a right window for the future. Ah for the upcoming slide. Okay. Um, about this? 
Yes, it's very okay. Nice. You can say. Very good. Okay, that's good. Thank you. For, sorry, sorry for this. Um, the this is actually this this map shows where we are now. Uh, as you see here, uh, um, the this is Japan. This is Japan, and the Kyushu is this island. And uh, we are located in a city called Fukuoka, on the northern coast of Kyushu Island. And this is the uh, the map of the the, the Fukuoka city. And uh, we moved uh, the main campus, um, and we just uh, com completed our moving to the main campus. Uh, but besides the main campus, we we have three. Uh, more campuses. One is a hospital. One is the design school, and uh, one is the uh, the uh, uh, Chikushi campus, where the um, some some uh, technology uh, and uh, science departments uh, are located. And Fukuoka is uh, is the biggest city uh, on this island, and uh, with this city has a 1.5 million uh, residents. And one of the five largest cities in Japan, but um, compared to um, Tokyo or Osaka, uh, Fukuoka has a very uh, livable size uh, for um, for li um, uh, the good quality of life. And uh, um, foreign uh, media's uh, ranked Fukuoka uh, often very highly. For instance, uh, the Newsweek. Uh, ranked Fukuoka as one of the ten exciting cities in the world, and uh, uh, and uh, the people are very open because Fukuoka has a very long has a long tradition as a gateway city for diplomacy and trading with Asian countries for more than one thousand years. Uh, it is uh, um, the uh, the oldest gateway uh, to an uh, overseas official uh, gateway to overseas. I move to the next slide. Can you see the slide? Yes. Okay. Um, so um, the the quality of living in Fukuoka is 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 very high, and uh, the as I said, that one of the most comfortable cities in Asia, and well balanced with city and nature, uh, the very uh, um, easy access to uh, the sea, uh, and the long beaches. At the same time, uh, we have a long, uh, let's say, tradition of uh, culture, as you see uh, on the uh, on the on the on right hand side and up right and upper side. This is the the uh, the one of the most famous uh, traditional festivals in Japan, and this is um, a, selected as uh, uh, representative example of um, intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. And very good quality of seafood this is very, very famous um, um, all over Japan. At the same time, and the modern buildings are um, is, is being constructed and in in this in this town. Uh, the the Kyushu University has many uh, strengths, um, but what this is one of them. Uh, the Kyushu University has a world. Um, class um, uh, research facilities. Um, on upper left, uh, this is actually the sea keeping and maneuvering basin, and high speed circulating water channel, and this is the only facility in Japan for this of this kind. On your right hand side. This is a sophisticated high voltage electron microscope. And uh, the bottom on the right hand side, uh, this is the picture taken by this uh, uh, microscope. And on the, uh, on a, on a, on a, on a lower uh, left side, this is the on the, uh, the, the, on the, on the campus uh, uh, with the um, technology and the science um, departments. It's an advanced fusion research center. There's a, a advanced fusion research center, uh, and this is the Kyushu University experiment with the steady state um, spherical uh, tokamak. Uh, tokamak.
this is the uh, the most updated uh, the number of students uh, enrolled. Uh, we have um, um, roughly uh, 12,000 undergraduate students, and uh, um, the graduate students is roughly 7,000, um, which includes um, about 4,000 master's students and 2,600 um, doctorate students. Um, as I said, that we have uh, 2,000 uh, faculty members. Uh, so um, the you can see that the student faculty ratio is very, very good. It is uh, probably one of the best uh, figure uh, in terms of the student and faculty ratio. Um, well, this is um, as, as I should have I should have said, uh, uh, shown this slide. So that we have two thousand faculty members, including professors, this six hundred seventy uh, seventy professors, and um, the same number, almost the same number of associate professors and the lecturers and assistant professors, and um, well, so administrative staff members, uh, approximately two thousand, and uh, um, others. Technical assistance and and so on at 3,500. Um, so this is almost total uh, uh, staff side is is teaching and and, and technical staff side is about 8,000. So the st student academic staff ratio is 8.9. This is the the um, the the top uh, the the top two uh, in 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 Japan. Uh, this uh, slide shows the number of international students. Uh, we have um, a 2,300 students uh, approximately uh, from um, 96 countries and regions. Um, a, this is a 12% of total number of students, and we plan to increase uh, this figure further well, this year um, it, it was rather difficult um, due to the uh, COVID-19, um, but uh, it, we plan to to recover it as as, as quickly as possible. Uh, as you see, the, the 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 majority of our international students are from um, in Asian countries, but uh, we have um, currently the 33 students from Egypt. This is uh, shown in, in red. Um, and this is the statistics of the number of international students. Um, as I said that um, the until 2019, it has been constantly increasing. Um, uh, but this doesn't show the, the, the figure in, in 2020. Uh, which was heavily affected by the COVID-19, but uh, we we hope that it will recover soon, and we try to our best to do many things to support uh, inbound students. Uh, and uh, well, so I could say that uh, internationalization of Kyushu University has been improving um, uh, constantly. And this slide. Um, shows uh, the um, well and some examples of um, a programs and courses taught in English. So, for instance, for undergrad program, we have School of Engineering, um, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, Applied Chemistry, Civil Engineering, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. The School of Agriculture has a bio uh, resource and a bio environment uh, course, and the School of Interdisciplinary Science and Innovation has also a, a very good uh, course for undergrad programs. And for the graduate programs, we have more varieties: um, Japanese humanities, medical science, uh, and the mathematics, um, economics, and uh, Asian health science. Uh, and and so on, and we have also the um, the international economic business law class as well. So um, uh, the 
we have uh, quite a variety of, of um, courses and programs taught in English. But um, uh, in addition to that, uh, we have um, a short term uh, study abroad program uh, for an undergraduate, undergraduate program for one year or um, even a shorter um, 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 summer school as well. We have um, overseas offices uh, in, in, in these uh, places um, uh, and, and uh, we are very proud of the fact that we have an office in also in Cairo and which makes uh, our contact uh, much easier. And we just opened our uh, office in, in Stockholm in Sweden. Um, um, the, as for the office in Cairo, um, I understand that uh, uh, Professor Tamel is the, the director of this uh, overseas office at Kyushu. So uh, um, we uh, are very happy uh, with that, uh, with having this um, office in, 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 in Cairo. And in a 2018, uh, the, the JMENA office was opened. JMENA stands for Japan, Middle East, and North Africa. And this is one of the original projects under Study in Japan Global Network Project to familiarize study in Japan through disseminating actual figure of study in Japan and to promote academic linkage among universities in, re in the region in Japan. Um, so it covers 21 countries in the region with four priority countries, namely Egypt, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates. And uh, the, uh, the, the Professor Oki uh, from the JMN office from Q at Kyushu University will make a presentation uh, on the JMN uh, uh, project and then at, at, a um, at a later stage. So I focus on the, the relationship between Egypt and Kyushu University. Um, we are very happy to share this statics because the, we, we had a number of Egyptian study, uh, students uh, in, in the past. Um, the, the, this statics shows the, the figure uh, since uh, 2013. And uh, the most of them are um, uh, graduate uh, students. Uh, the in every year, one or two students join the um, a, the bachelor's um, um, course, and uh, mainly they join the. Um, bachelor's course in taught in English at the engineering school. Uh, but besides this uh, figure, um, uh, the there are some uh, students uh, from Egypt who uh, joined the in the summer course as well. And as you see this picture, there is a, a network of Egyptian uh, students. And uh, also the, the alumni association uh, was created and they, they celebrated uh, the, the, the reunion um, in, in December 2019. Well, Kush University uh, has been organizing um, uh, study abroad fairs in Egypt to um, attract uh, an excellent Egyptian students. For instance, in 2019, uh, the Kish University um, held um, events at the Cairo University, Ain Shams University, Tanta University, and Aswan University, and, and others. Um, as you see in this picture, that um, a lot of participants uh, came to to this event. I'm I'm, I'm very happy to 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 share uh, these pictures with you. And in 2020, 
um, due to the COVID-19, uh, we were not able to hold um, a study abroad fair, but we did uh, it on online, and uh, we plan to continue this uh, online study event, uh, online study uh, in, in Japan week uh, again this year, 2021. So the, uh, the, the most updated information uh, will be um, available. Um, so for instance, um, um, please uh, use this QR code. Um, so that uh, the updated information will become available and informed to you. The, the, to conclude um, my uh, presentation, um, uh, I'd like to uh, share this picture. Um, this is our main library, the main library. So uh, the, um, this is, uh, uh, the Kyushu University um, has uh, one of the biggest uh, the collection books uh, in Japan, and also the, um, a, the Kyushu University is very famous for its uh, 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 insect studies, and uh, the Kyushu University's collection is, is one of the, the biggest one in the world. So this said, um, um, I would like to uh, thank again for uh, listening to my presentation. And um, we have a variety of options uh, for um, your students uh, to study at Kyushu University, including graduate school um, degree program uh, uh, from graduate school degree, uh, degree uh, program, seeking program to um, the summer uh, school uh, for a shorter period. So um, uh, we would like to uh, welcome your students um, eh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Kono, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, accepting our invitation and actually you have uh, given uh, detailed information about Kyushu University for all the guests. So thank you so much. Arigato uh, gozaimasu. So uh, now it's, uh, let me give the speech to Professor Gad El Adi, former cultural attaché uh, in the Egyptian embassy in Tokyo. And uh, currently he is the president of the national Research Institute of Astronomy and Geophysics. So he will be explaining the, um, a topic uh, regarding the Egypt-Japan uh, multidisciplinary scientific research opportunities. So to you, Professor Ged. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tamer, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, good afternoon, uh, our colleagues and friends from Kyushu University. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to thank uh, Professor Ashraf Haider, the acting president of Galala University, and Professor uh, Mohammed Shinnawi, acting vice president, for inviting me to this uh, webinar. And I hope I could give some information would be helpful to the staff of Galala University as well as uh, the students. Uh, it, it is my pleasure also to be a, a, a member of uh, Kyushu University graduates, uh, alumni. Uh, I spent uh, almost 10 years in Japan, uh, six of them in Kyushu at Hakata. Uh, I was there from uh, 1997 till 2001, then uh, from 2003 uh, until 2005. Then I was a member of uh, Kyushu University International uh, Relations Committee uh, during uh, 2013, from 2011 to 2013. Uh, today, uh, in my presentation, I'll give uh, some uh, guidelines and information about uh, uh, possible opportunity and uh, chances uh, for research between Egypt and Japan, especially for our colleagues who are, who are attending uh, today's webinar. The content of my presentation will give some background 
uh, about Japan and why to study and research in Japan, and information about available scholarships and fellowships, and the relation, scientific collaboration between Egypt and Japan. Then uh, JSBS, as well as uh, Japan Society uh, 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 alumni in Egypt. Uh, since I'm a member, I'm board member of alumni of JSBS in Cairo. Uh, as, as Professor Kono explained in his presentation, he mentioned about uh, Kyushu, and Kyushu is one of uh, uh, many uh, Japanese universities, almost has the same standard, the same high quality of research. And that's why uh, I myself choose uh, Japan for my uh, postgraduate studies. Uh, it is there is availability of advanced research environment, high education standard, rich tra tradition and culture. And Professor Kono showed in his presentation one of the uh, most uh, lovely uh, festival, Yamakasa, uh, that occurs in Hakata. I had participated many times for Yamakasa festival. In addition to the safety of environment and social uh, affairs around uh, the student who could help. Uh, greatly uh, to do scientific research. Uh, out of uh, many opportunities for fund or scholarship between Egypt and Japan, I, I would list here on the screen some of them. Uh, the most uh, popular and familiar one, uh, which is MEX, Minister of uh, Education, Culture, uh, Science of Japan, uh, Mumbu Kagakusho, and uh, this one of the most one I, which I was uh, funded uh, 1997. The second is just for those uh, uh, students or researchers who are living uh, shortly in Japan. Then uh, JSBS, Japan Site for Promotion of Science, is fellowship for uh, PhD dissertations. I will explain later details. <clears throat> then uh, Japan Foundation mainly for uh, Japanese language and Japanese culture uh, studies. And from Egyptian side, there is a couple of uh, scholarships, one from Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research. This for Japanese uh, students and researchers who are doing research uh, in Arabic language or Islamic uh, culture and, and studies, including history and architecture as well. Then uh, Egypt-Japan Partnership uh, for Education which was formerly a uh, mission department uh, of uh, Minister of Higher Education, and now it is a uh, joint program, Egypt and Japan, which called uh, Partnership for Education. Uh, the scholarship mentioned, uh, briefly, I will, I will go through those one, uh, because I know the time is very limited. Uh, out of uh, this, uh, the mix it and the application could be uh, through the, uh, the embassy of Japan in Cairo or through uh, university uh, recommendation, like Kyushu University can make recommendation or acceptance to a student to go directly through uh, a mixed scholarship. An application usually during uh, April, March every year, and selection or start of the of the study uh, uh, start from September, October, or uh, April next year. Uh, this is criteria for eligibility, and I think those are uh, published uh, everywhere uh, on the MC website and the universities as well. So I will go quickly. This just uh, uh, figure show the number of uh, Egyptian uh, students who got uh, mixed scholarship during the last uh, few years. Uh, here uh, is available for, for all funds. Uh, by the way, mixed scholarship is not necessary to, to have a PhD degree. If you applied for PhD examination, entrance exam, and uh, succeed, so you can continue to, to get your PhD. Otherwise, it can be up to two years only as a research uh, student. And this is a condition, uh, age, and eligibility for uh, uh, GBA or other uh, details. We need more information, I can share it or share it later. Uh, there is, uh, since a, a few years, and with the establishment of Kyushu University Cairo, uh, Cairo office, uh, it was a program by Mexit called G30 to increase the number of uh, foreign students in Japan. Since that time, there was a program for undergraduate students in English, 
and this is also eligibility for those students. And I believe my colleagues, uh, Dr. Tamer Nasr, will explain more details uh, about this. Uh, then uh, this is the procedure of the application uh, to the embassy uh, uh, term, uh, the check eligibility, and then uh, screening. Then uh, it go with interview and final uh, selection. Uh, this through uh, mixed website, you can get more information, not only Q University, but many others. And I, I recommend uh, all students to, to go in detail for this website and student fairs, which Q University arrange and organize in Egypt uh, every year. Unfortunately, it wasn't uh, available last year because COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. I know uh, the Japanese embassy in Cairo uh, arrange uh, information and advisor uh, to the students or the applicant. Uh, two of our former uh, Egyptian uh, graduates from uh, Japan used to, to be a consultant at the embassy for answering any question uh, by a student. Uh, in addition to mixed scholarship, uh, Kyushu University uh, office in Cairo, uh, as uh, Professor Kono mentioned, and I believe Tamer also will explain, and it was my honor to be one of the founder of this office, uh, starting from 2009 with my colleague, Dr. Safat Hasaballah, and now uh, my colleague, Dr. Tamer Nas, uh, are taking care of, uh, of all affairs of this office through uh, its office uh, in, in Maadi or either uh, website. Another uh, chance and opportunity for Egyptian uh, to, to have uh, funded or doing scholarship with Japan, which is uh, Egypt, uh, Japan, University of Science and Technology. And I will not uh, talk it, uh, about it today since we are considering El Galala, but I believe uh, through uh, the available uh, funding program, it could be uh, multilateral uh, collaboration, Galala, Ijast, and Kyushu for research project and education programs as well. Uh, the other part of my presentation about uh, Japan Society for Promotion of Science as a postdoctoral uh, uh, fellowships, as well as research project and seminars uh, programs. JSBS uh, was established uh, since 1939 uh, to build uh, uh, the robust international research base and uh, support curiosity driven research in all disciplines within Japan and among Japanese and uh, foreign uh, researchers. Uh, uh, it's it, it's uh, under the umbrella of MEX together with other uh, ministries and, and uh, offices uh, or organization like JST, NIDO and other uh, compose the Council of Science and Technology and Innovation in Japan. I'm not talking in detail about this since uh, Professor Kono and our colleagues uh, can uh, talk in details, but just uh, mention uh, what JSBS do and what JSBS can support. It, it support and uh, uh, all applied research to be conducted in Japan, as well as a joint seminar between uh, Japanese and foreign researchers, and one of foreign researchers is Egypt, and later on I will show uh, some cases of uh, project and seminars between Egypt and Japan, funded uh, by GSBS. Uh, out of the programs, uh, I could uh, highlight in, in main five programs uh, supporting uh, international joint research and seminars, that's through bilateral uh, MOU, and uh, another very interesting program called Core to Core Program. This can be uh, for foreign researchers, uh, together with Japanese researchers as well. And for uh, young researchers, there is uh, the second uh, program called Hope Meeting. All details will come in next uh, slide then. Uh, the most uh, crucial program for JSBS is postdoctoral fellowships. Uh, out of the researchers, uh, JSBS supported uh, as a foreign researcher to, to be involved with Japanese research, almost 4,680, that's during the fiscal year 2018, and sending uh, almost 4,000 
340 Japanese researchers abroad. Out of those, uh, 41 Egyptian researchers have been to Japan, and uh, 21 uh, Japanese uh, researchers have been uh, to Egypt uh, during the fiscal year 2018. Uh, the GSBS activities uh, is managed uh, mainly through its website, as well as their uh, offices worldwide. Uh, GSBS has 11 uh, offices, the headquarter in Tokyo, and one of the offices in Cairo, uh, which is in the Malik Cairo Research Station, which uh, lies uh, uh, with the overseas counterpart research promotion. And here in Egypt, uh, Ministry of Higher Education has two kind of uh, MOU agreement with GSBS. One of them was STDF, which is ca uh, called now STIFA, uh, Science and Technology uh, Innovation Fund Agency. This funding uh, joint program and seminars, and uh, another uh, agreement with uh, uh, sector of missions, uh, uh, culture and mission sectors, that's providing support to Hope uh, uh, and Rombaco uh, programs. Uh, Professor Naoko Fukami is the director of the office, and she's available all the time uh, to give more information about JSPS, as well as uh, the Cairo office hold. Uh, uh, sem monthly uh, seminars. Uh, however, due to uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it's work now online, and I'm, I'm one of those people manage these seminars. Uh, last Saturday, we had a very uh, long day uh, intrinsic seminar about COVID-19 uh, and its influence on scientific research. Uh, out of uh, uh, support that JSBS is doing is creating alumni uh, society. Uh, it has 18 alumni association all over the world. Uh, Egyptian one was established 2008, and I'm proud to be a member of, uh, of this society, where we have uh, 77 uh, alumni fellow who have been granted JSBS fellowship uh, before. Uh, one more interesting uh, social network surface that JSBS uh, established uh, a couple of years ago, which called JSBS uh, Net, where researcher can... Uh, professor, professor Gant, sorry yes. for the interruption, but uh, we couldn't see the next slide, so now we see the GSPS slide. So could you reshare your slide again? That one? Uh, uh, could you reshare the slide again, please? So turn off and turn on again, please. Could you see now, uh, Dr. Tamer? Yes, it's clear now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, out of uh, uh, support that JSBS is doing to, to have robust international collaborative network towards uh, alumni associations, and out of these uh, 18 alumni association worldwide, according to this map, we have the Egyptian one, it was established 2008, and I'm one of the board member of this uh, association where we have 77 uh, fellow uh, members. And uh, last uh, couple of years, uh, JSBS has established social network service to provide uh, or to arrange platform to, uh, to be friend connection, uh, create community in, in, in research uh, disciplines, and even page to ca who, who can follow uh, the events worldwide uh, organized by JSBS or with support of JSBS. Uh, uh, my research life where some of the researchers uh, tell the stories and pictures about her or, or, or his uh, research life in Japan as well as it, it provides uh, uh, information to those young uh, researcher or early career researcher to find some chances uh, in Japan as well. Uh, out of the research collaboration that JSBS uh, support through bilateral collaboration can be based on MOUs or even without MOUs uh, or even partnership with joint program and joint research as well as core to core program. Details like this, uh, countries where uh, JSBS has a memorandum of understanding like uh, Egyptian case, the Japanese researcher discuss and, and uh, file, uh, file, uh, find application and submit proposal 
to Jess Best headquarters through an office in Asian universities. An Egyptian uh, researcher or overseas researcher as well can submit proposal to the counterpart here in Egypt. We have STDF or currently uh, STIFA. Both Jess Best and STIFA uh, uh, consider uh, the, the fund and screening and uh, judging the application. Uh, uh, yearly, uh, this program uh, supports Japanese, science, Japanese researcher with 2.5 uh, million yen uh, per year. Uh, and for the Egyptian, uh, is almost the same amount in Egyptian uh, bounds. Uh, yearly, we have two uh, funded research projects from Egypt side. And uh, those examples of uh, the project funded uh, last uh, couple of years. And for seminars, uh, it should be funded two uh, seminars. However, because uh, COVID pandemic last year, it was only one seminar who had been granted uh, the fund. And those uh, list of those seminars, Kyushu University was one of those uh, organized seminars uh, with Egypt uh, uh, last uh, couple of years. Mainly it was uh, EJUST, and I, I believe it was one with Asiut University, if I may uh, recall. Uh, even if there is no uh, MOU between uh, JCBS and uh, overseas country, still available for the researcher worldwide to have uh, uh, funded by JCBS. But this, uh, there should be direct connection between GSBS and the funding agency in the country, which is not uh, so preferred, but still available. The most interesting one, I, and I, I recommend this for our colleagues at Galala University, is to use core to core program, where GSBS can support multilateral, multilateral program to, in, for example, Egyptian uh, researcher, one African, and one Asian together with the Japanese one. And we have a lot of uh, application every year and it really uh, support uh, quite a uh, good fund for research. Here we have some example at Cairo University and Minerva University uh, and uh, Nuclear Material Authority as well. Uh, for for young researchers and colleagues, there is hope meeting. Hope meeting that JSBS invite uh, some of Nobel laureate in one discipline uh, uh, as a camp, science camp. Uh, they invite young researchers or uh, uh, undergraduate student to stay or spend two weeks with those Nobel laureate to have friendly discussion and communication of science, which I believe it's very uh, fruitful and uh, uh, motivation for those young researchers uh, as well. For fellowship program, uh, there is different uh, kind of uh, postdoctoral fellowship. Uh, long ones up to two years and short one up to uh, 60 days. And I recommend all colleagues at Galila University to apply to those uh, programs. Uh, one more uh, interesting uh, funding program is Rombaco. Those for PhD students who can uh, spend uh, up to three years in Japan, not in one term. Uh, each year he spent up to three months. It's like a, a, a joint supervision between Egyptian and Japanese researcher for that student who can uh, do his experiment or her experiment in Japanese uh, laboratories and uh, return back uh, to his uh, lab in, in Cairo or in Egypt for continuing writing and, and finalizing uh, the thesis. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, activities can be uh, done for PhD students with this from back. Uh, special program for those uh, JS Best Fellow, which called Bridge. Uh, JS Best Fellow member can be granted uh, a fund to spend up to 30 days uh, in his former, uh, with his former supervisor in Japan, which we called Bridge to uh, reinitiate and restrengthen the relation between. Uh, the JS Best Fellow and his former institute. Uh, that picture for uh, President Kono, former president of JS Best, during his visit to Cairo, uh, that's in Zamalek, in JS Best Cairo office uh, last year, and it was very uh, fruitful uh, visit and a lot of uh, discussion. This is a picture for the entrance of JS Best uh, Cairo office. 
Of course, the time is limited to explain more about alumni association, but I think I can stop here and, and I'm ready to answer any question for our uh, colleagues and students. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Gadel Adi, for your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, it's really interesting. We know that your schedule is busy, so we thank you so much for joining us uh, today. So uh, now uh, let me uh, give the speech to uh, Dr. Uki Yutaro, Research Assistant Professor at J. Mena Office, International Affairs Department at Kyushu University. Actually, uh, uh, I want to thank him so much for his great efforts. Uh, he uh, was responsible for coordination with uh, Kyushu University professors, and he helped us so much in organizing such webinar. So thank you so much for you, and he will be explaining the role of J. Mena projects. Uh, so to you, Dr. Oki. Uh, thank you very much, Professor uh, Tommy Badawi. Can you hear me and can you see my screen, right? Yes, it's clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Professor Gad, uh, could you uh, mute your mic, please? Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Rafat, I am a student of the Jamia Turkish Medalist. I am a student of Arabi in Kahira, in the Middle East, in the Middle East. Today I will speak in English. But, uh, yeah. First of all, I would like to thank you, for Professor Ashraf Haidal, Professor Mohammed Darishin Nawi. Uh, Professor Tarek Abu Mati, uh, of course, Professor Atame Badawi for setting this opportunity for us. And uh, today I would like to talk about the role of JMNA project. Uh, actually, this is a slide that Professor Kono already uh, spoke about it. But uh, as you may see, JMNA is the abbreviation of the term uh, Japan, Middle East, and North Africa. And what we are doing here is, uh, uh, is as he explained, familiar, familiarize study in Japan through disseminating um, study in Japan to, to the people in MENA region. And the main target of our project is, of course, 21 countries in MENA region, but the mainly Egypt, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. And uh, I would like to explain a bit more about what JMENA project is trying to do. Yeah, actually what we are doing is trying to make uh, or building the network or connection between Japanese organization and the organization concerned in MENA region. As a Japanese organization, we are focusing firstly, of course, Japanese universities, which want to recruit students from MENA region. So JMENA office is inside Kyushu University, but we are not working only for Kyushu University, we are working for other Japanese universities too, uh, mainly partner university for our JMENA project. Secondly, uh, the Japanese organization, Japanese organization, uh, we are collaborating with some Japanese governmental organization, mainly Ministry of Education and Ministry of Foreign Affairs. More specifically, we are creating a strong relationship with uh, Japanese embassy in your country, yeah, in Egypt. Because as Professor uh, Gadel Kadi uh, told us, a mixed scholarship, which is one of the most common scholarship for students for who who want to study in Japan. Yeah, of course, about this scholarship, Professor Tame will uh, talk a little bit more after my presentation. But to apply this mixed scholarship. You have to go to, uh, or you have to apply at the Japanese embassy in your country. So we are creating a relationship with the embassy. And sadly, Japanese organization, uh, we are collaborating with its private enterprise. For instance, Japanese companies. Some of them have branch office in MENA region in Cairo or in Alexandria. Uh, so, <clears throat> And some of Japanese, some Japanese company want to have that kind of branch office in 
in, in MENA region. So this could be, this relationship could be the good option for students who have studied in Japan. And as the organization concerned in MENA region, we are focusing with, uh, of course, firstly, prospective students who want to study in Japanese university. For them, we are providing various opportunity to know a Japanese university and Japanese society. I will show you about it later. Uh, secondly, we are trying to have a good relationship with, ja uh, with, no, no, with universities in MENA region, which want to have or which want to create or strengthen the academic relationship with uh, Japanese universities. Hmm. For for research reason or for student future. So uh, for this opportunity, I'd like to thank you for Galala University, uh, of course. And sadly, we are making a connection with alumni of Japanese uh, universities. For example, Egyptian alumni of Japanese university. Of course, some of them are in their home country in Egypt, or others are still in Japan for work or for study. Uh, but in either case, the experience as a student in Japanese university must be variable advice, variable advice for the prospective student. Now we are making interview videos for our YouTube channel. I will show you uh, later. Then, as I mentioned some minutes before, uh, JMRA project is conducting its mission with some Japanese university, with some Japanese partner universities. Uh, which want to, uh, this partner university want to recruit students from MENA region strongly. Uh, currently, we have 90 partner universities uh, for our MENA, JMENA project. And uh, <clears throat> now we are discussing with other universities so we can add some more universities in a few months to the list of here. Uh, you can find various universities here and uh, some of them are very famous. But uh, if you want to know about them more, please access our website. Uh, this is the, the screenshot of our website, but uh, just quickly you can access this QR code to our website. And uh, from that website, you can uh, see the detailed information of each university. Uh, here, I want to introduce what we are doing a little bit more. Uh, the first thing we are doing is simply speaking collection of the information. Yeah. Uh, information regarding the needs and the concern of the pros prospective student and guardians in MENA region for study abroad and especially of course studying in Japan. Also, we are collecting information about needs and concern of Japanese university, needs of university in MENA region. <clears throat> Yeah, all these information, all these three information, it's basis of creating the network between Japanese organization and organization or prospective student in MENA region. Furthermore, we are collecting the information relating to the alumni of Japanese university and need of Japanese private sector, I mean, companies. Both must be the beneficial for student from MENA region. Uh, second thing we are doing is connecting Japanese university with the organization in MENA region. Yeah, first, of course, with uh, university uh, in MENA region. So we are trying to prom we are trying to do or we are doing is uh, promote student exchange program uh, between Japanese university and, uh, for example, Egyptian universities uh, or uh, supporting MOU on academic exchange with Japanese university and, uh, and Egyptian university. Mm. Also, we are trying to collaborate with embassies in Japan. Yeah. I mean, uh, for example, Egyptian embassy has cultural bureau in Tokyo, of course, has Professor, uh, Professor uh, Gadel Kadi knows much. Uh, of course, he knows much, but uh, yeah, we are trying to collaborate with Egyptian University or the other uh, countries' embassy in Tokyo. Yeah, so we are trying to have a regular contact with them. 
Uh, last things uh, we are doing is, let's say, a dissemination of information we've collected. And the aim of this, of course, and aim of this activity are, of course, uh, attract the attention of prospective students to the universities in Japan. So what we are disseminating is, first of all, merit of study in Japan. In other words, good point of Japanese university, of course, it depends on university, but uh, we are trying to disseminate this kind of information to the student. And to clear away the concern or study in Japan, we provide the information such as cost of living, security, uh, campus life, and the fitting into the community. Uh, for example, whether you can find halal food in, in Japanese cities or not, or that kind of information. Also, yeah, additionally, we are trying to provide the information relating to the student future career, career development. Yeah, at the same time, uh, we are introducing life voice or experience of student or alumni student in Japan. Yeah, uh, we are introducing mainly uh, about daily life or campus life in Japan and the achievement of study or research in Japan. Also, Japanese nature, culture, and events they have experienced. Uh, to, disse to, to disseminate all this information, we organized face-to-face -face study in Japan fair in the region from uh, 2018 to 2019, I mean, before the pandemic of COVID-19. Due to the COVID-19, it was impossible to organize similar face-to-face -face event in Japan so last year, we organized online studying fair for that region. So these photos, yeah, actually this, this photo uh, shown by Professor Kono before, but uh, as he explained, these photos are our face-to-face -face study in Japan fair in Egypt 2019. We have held in Cairo University, Ain Shams University, Aswan University, and the British University in Cairo, and so on. And these, uh, about our online fair we did last year. As you may see here, not only Kyushu University, you can see the list of university participated in, to this fair. Uh, you can see Hiroshima University, Hokkaido University, Kyoto University, and other than that. Yeah. So as you may see here, not only Kyushu University, but other uh, Japanese university joined. This year, we will do similar event uh, one time or two times. So if you are interested, please join it. Of course, it, it's free of charge. I, think I, I would like to add uh, is I have mentioned that the experience of student or alumni from Mena region must be beneficial for you to think about your future study in Japanese university. So we are making a series of interview videos with various students or alumni. We have already shoot around 20 students or alumni, and we are continuing. And most of the editing is finishing. So please check and subscribe our YouTube channel. Uh, day by day, we will upload a uh, new video. So please uh, take a screenshot of this slide and uh, later uh, please access from here. Currently, we don't have so many videos on our channel, but uh, maybe this month or next month, we will approach uh, two or three or four or more than videos. And yeah, also, uh, you may have more concrete questions regarding study in Japan. For that case, please contact uh, to us uh, through our SNS. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, you. You can ask any question regarding studying in Japan or studying in Kyushu University, of course, via Facebook page. You can ask directly to us. We may need some time to answer your question, but, uh, but uh, we will answer. So please uh, feel free to ask anything. And uh, these are also the QR code of our SNS, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we also have home pages, two home pages. From these two home pages, you can find uh, the Japanese university, uh, which is a partner 
which are partner of our project. And you can find, you can search this university uh, from the topic you want to study. So please visit our uh, website too. Especially this one is preferable, I think. So uh, that's all for from me. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, for more information, visit our Facebook page. And this is a QR code for our Facebook page. So mm -hmm. please ask anything from here. Or just send us an email from info.jmnajimu.kyushuyu.ac.jp. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, looking forward to see you in Kyushu University or somewhere in Japan. Shukran Gizela. Shukran. Thank you so much, Dr. Oki, for your interesting presentation. Uh, and now uh, it's uh, my pleasure to give the speech to Professor Temernos the director of uh, Kyushu University Cairo office and a professor of pharmaceutical chemistry uh, Helwan University. Uh, and he will be uh, explaining uh, the opportunities to study in Japan and the role of the uh, Kyushu University Cairo office. Uh, and uh, before uh, Professor Temer start, I want to thank him so much for his cooperation. He uh, actually, he attended uh, many uh, several meetings with uh, Dr. Uki and uh, and uh, me uh, to prepare for uh, such uh, a great webinar. So to you, Professor Temer. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Just a moment to upload the presentation. Sorry, it takes time. Well, take your time. We are waiting for you. Maybe heavy due to a lot of uh, photos. So. Sorry for this interruption. So I will stop uploading and try to share the screen. Can you see my slide? Yes, it's clear now, but please, uh, Professor Temer, make it full screen. Is it okay now? Yes, it's okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I would like to uh, thank Professor Ashraf Haider, Professor uh, Muhammad Shinnawi, and of course, uh, Dr. Temer Badawi, my colleague, for inviting me to this event. Uh, to uh, give a speech about the opportunities to study in uh, Kyushu University. Uh, first of all, my name is uh, Tamer uh, Nasr. I am the director of Kyushu University Cairo office and the professor of uh, pharmaceutical chemistry at Helwan uh, University, Egypt. Uh, first, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, Kyushu University where we are located, of course, in Fukuoka uh, city in Kyushu Island. That's why it is called Kyushu, or named Kyushu University. And uh, Kyushu uh, University uh, main campus and the most uh, modern campus is the Itu campus. And there are, of course, three other campuses, which are the hospital campus, Ohashi campus, and the Chikushi campus. Uh, Professor, uh, Kono already uh, gave information about these campuses. Uh, in Fukuoka uh, city, the four uh, seasons in the year are very clear. So this is the Sakura 
uh, flowers in the spring, and this is the summer, and this is the autumn and winter. So you can see uh, the clearly the four seasons in Fukuoka city. Uh, there are very famous uh, festivals in uh, Fukuoka city, such as this festival. So you can enjoy your stay in Fukuoka. Kyushu University uh, was founded in 1911 as uh, Kyushu Imperial University, and it was the uh, fourth of seven Imperial Universities. And this is uh, the campuses where in uh, Fukuoka City. This is the most recent uh, campus, which is uh, very big and named uh, Itu Campus. And now most of the faculties are moved, uh, completely moved to this new campus. In, in, in Kyushu University, uh, you will find uh, highly equipped laboratories to do your research. So you can do very excellent uh, research. And, uh, you can publish your papers in highly uh, ranked international publications. And moreover, you can uh, do some patents, of course. Hydrogen research is uh, the top in the world and uh, Kyushu University is very famous for the uh, hydrogen research. So you can uh, conduct your research in hydrogen energy in Kyushu uh, University, and these are the facilities. Uh, and um, it is the future energy. So some cars can move in the future using the hydrogen energy. So a lot of research is now is uh, in this field is done at, at Kyushu University. Research topics in E2 campus uh, in, in includes the following, uh, hydrogen technology, power cell, nanoscience, uh, biotechnology, future chemistry, uh, superconductor science and systems, analysis of quantum radiations, new energy technology, uh, geohazards, and so on. Uh, aeronautics and uh, astronautics, uh, Dr. Koichi Wakata. This is a very famous uh, astronaut. Uh, Kyushu University visiting professor. He is a Kyushu University visiting professor and one of the alumni members. And the, he is the first Asian commander of International Space Station. Uh, he studied previously in Kyushu University. Kyushu University Cairo office uh, is located in Maadi and was uh, founded or established in November uh, 2009. And uh, it plan and host uh, university fairs for Japanese universities and uh, offer information on Japanese universities, provide assistance for admission, and offer pre-departure orientation regarding Japan is one of the most important offices and uh, belonging to Kyushu University worldwide. And here is our address. We are located in Hadai and Maadi, and the nearest uh, metro station is uh, Hadai and Maadi metro station. And this is our telephone and official uh, email address. And we are opening from 10 to uh, morning time till PM. Uh, 8, 8 p.m. evening time uh, from Sunday to Thursday. So you can visit us or arrange a meeting and we can do a lot of orientation for you how to join Kyushu University. Kyushu University has uh, international student research, uh, international student and research support center uh, where uh, the support center assists our international students and researchers with the following how to get the visa, uh, airport, airport pickup, assistance after arrival, providing housing information, 
uh, residential assistance, uh, translation of documents into English or Japanese, uh, interpretation over counter and co uh, coordination and the management of international student support team. Of course, as other assistance can be provided. There are four ways to study in Kyushu University in English. Uh, first of all, the first one is uh, enrolling as undergraduate uh, program. But for Galala University students, you cannot apply for this one. And second one, exchange program for uh, undergraduate uh, students. Also, uh, Galala students are not uh, relevant for this one until there is MOU um, or Memorandum of Understanding has been uh, signed between the two universities. After that, students can do exchange program. Of course, you are. Uh, if, of course, if you are um, a high school student uh, or someone who interested in uh, doing undergraduate studies, you can apply for this one. But if you are a Galala student, Galala University student, you will not mm, be able to enroll in this program. But Galala University students can apply uh, for short-term study programs. And there are two programs I'm going to talk about them for you. Uh, also, you can conduct your research uh, project, uh, I mean the graduation project uh, in Kyushu University. Uh, and I will tell you how uh, can you uh, get this opportunity. And uh, after getting your uh, bachelor degree, you can go for uh, graduate programs, I mean master and PhD uh, study. So study programs. So these are the opportunities for Galala uh, University student to study uh, in Japan, in Kyushu University. First one. I will, uh, I will give a speech about the short-term study programs in Kyushu University. Uh, this photo is uh, for participants for study in Japan program in 2018. And this one is for the students who participated for the study in Japan program in 2019. This slide shows us two short-term programs available for Galala student, uh, the first program is summer in Japan. Of course, undergraduate students in all academic fields can apply for this program. And this program is conducted in English for a very short time, which is about one month, four weeks, uh, mainly uh, in July. And the field of study uh, will be introduction to uh, contemporary Japan and Japanese language. Uh, and to be eligible for this, uh, you should be, uh, you should know English very well and uh, has at least uh, TOEFL score this figure 79 IPT score. The second program is uh, Asian in today's world. Asian in today's world. Uh, it is also oriented in English, and uh, all undergraduate uh, students uh, from all academic fields can uh, contribute in this or, or can study uh, in this short program. And the field of study is Asian studies and Asian language and culture. Uh, and this is very short. Uh, program only for two weeks. It starts from late February to early March. And the host university is changed uh, every two to three years. The first program, which is summer in Japan, uh, you can search for this information through the internet. Uh, Kyushu University for this year, summer in Japan 2021, will be uh, mainly online program due to the pandemic of COVID-19. So online courses and applications uh, will be uh, available. 
So in this program, you will experience our exciting and immersive online courses from anywhere in the world. So you can apply and study from Egypt online. The program period is uh, um, will be from July 5th to July 27th, uh, 2021. And the application deadline will be on March, so next month. So please hurry up and register yourself and apply for this available opportunity for the coming summer. So summer in Japan program, for more information, please visit this website. I'm going to give a brief um, information about summer in Japan. It is a four week program during the summer time. Intensive study abroad program that Kyushu University offers. Designed for undergraduate level students in all academic fields. And the study in Japan uh, program offers uh, the participants a comprehensive package of resources, opportunities, and hands-on experiences to become familiar with or further deepen their understanding of Japan in today's social, culture, political, and economic context. Using English as a language of instruction, and this program offers the participants both traditional in-class academic coursework, so you can do some classes, and of course you can go off-campus activity. You can go for uh, off-campus activities for experiential uh, learning. These two kinds of learning methodologies uh, and activities facilitate uh, in an uh, intensive and effective manner, the participants' understanding of uh, contemporary Japanese society and culture. The second program is Asian in today's world. So the, this is a screenshot for the website. So Asian in today's world for 2021. Already uh, this year, you will not be able uh, to go because the application deadline was in December 20, uh, December 31st. And the program will start in the coming March, 8 to uh, 19th. But if you are interested to go the next year at the same time, you can follow this uh, homepage and apply uh, next uh, year uh, when the application period is available. Asian in today's world a program. Uh, briefly, uh, is for two week international study program, and focus on Asian and East Asian affairs. It is designed for university undergraduate students from around the world, and the courses are mainly instructed in English. And due to the spread of COVID-19 across the globe, uh, this program for 2021 will be held online and uh, co-organized by Kyushu University in Japan and the Mahidol University in Thailand. And for more information, you can visit this website and uh, uh, follow it uh, for next application for the next year. Maybe the next year COVID-19 can um, finish or turn over, and you can be uh, able to visit Japan for two weeks in the next spring. Uh, there are graduate uh, programs in Kyushu universities. Of course, uh, to internationalize Kyushu University, Kyushu University uh, is offering uh, many programs in English for the undergraduate program. Uh, if you are a high school student, you can apply for these four uh, programs at the School of Engineering, which is uh, which are Electrical Engineering and Computer Science program, Applied Chemistry program, Civil Engineering program, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, 
And uh, the School of Agriculture, there is another program conducted in English, which is a bio uh, resources and bio environment. Also, another program is available at the School of Interdisciplinary Science and Innovation. And after you finish your study at Galala University, uh, you can conduct your research in the future uh, for masters and PhD in this university. So a lot of programs is offered uh, are offered in uh, English language. Uh, among the programs, uh, Japanese humanities, medical sciences, dental sciences, mathematics, human sciences, uh, of course, pharmacy, uh, dental science, uh, engineering, um, agriculture, architecture, and so many more uh, programs are offered. And for this information, please visit this website and for the admission procedures also you can follow up. Each program, <coughs> sorry, each program for the undergraduate also, um, there is a, a eligibility criteria for each program. So if you are interested, please visit the website and search for the uh, admission uh, eligibility. <coughs> Sorry. Tuition, uh, living expenses, and scholarships. As you can see here, you can study in Kyushu University as a research student, special students, for a few months, and this is a tuition fees for each month. So you can conduct your uh, uh, research. Uh, needed for the graduation project. Fukuoka is known for the low cost for food and housing, and for your more information, you can visit this website. Scholarships also are available, and my colleagues already uh, explained the Maxit scholarship. And for detailed information, you can visit uh, this website. Other also uh, funding organizations can afford um, scholarships for the students, like JASSO, Fukuoka Overseas Student Future Development Scholarship, Fukuoka Prefecture Scholarship, Fukuoka City International Foundation Scholarship. And these scholarships can be granted for uh, graduate students who are doing masters and PhD and undergraduate students in the bachelor. Uh, stage, and this is a bid amount monthly. The scholarships for privately uh, financed students, around 50 scholarships are listed at the following URL. So please visit this uh, QR code to uh, get more information about the available scholarships. Uh, we hope you can come and join us in the future at Kyushu University, and thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Dembernos, for your uh, interesting uh, presentation. And uh, we wish that uh, we could, you could uh, help us through uh, Cairo, Kyushu University Cairo office to establish uh, MOU uh, with uh, Kyushu University soon, so that we can... Uh, this uh, is my home. Yes, take the benefit and the advantage of, uh, uh, of the student yeah. exchange program for longer periods of time. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for your cooperation and for your speech. So uh, next... Uh, uh, let me uh, introduce the next session, and uh, it's really my pleasure uh, that uh, Associate Professor Yazakuchi Tomoyu uh, will join us from the Faculty of Dental Science, Kyushu University. Uh, also, it's a, a very special day for me, because today uh, Professor Kukita Toshu will join us and actually, Professor Kokita was my uh, PhD uh, supervisor. Uh, as I studied my PhD and graduated from Kyushu University, 
So he was my supervisor. So it's really my honor and my pleasure that my supervisor will give a speech today. So I learned from him so much and uh, uh, I was proud and I'm still proud to be his student. Uh, so thank you, Professor Kukita, for joining us. And this session will be uh, for Associate Professor Yazakuchi Tomoyo and for Professor Kukita. It's a shared session. So thank you also, Yazakuchi Sensei, for joining us. Uh, and uh, to you, uh, you will explain today an introduction to the graduate studies in Kyushu University in the Graduate School of Dental Science. So uh, to you, Professor Yazakuchi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you okay. clearly. Uh, and uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see. Okay. Okay. Firstly, uh, thank you for giving us a nice opportunity of introducing our graduate school. Today's speakers are Tomoyo Yasukoji, me, uh, and Professor Dr. Toshio Professor Dr. Toshi Okukita, who is a professor from Department of Molecular Cellular Biology and Oral Anatomy. And he was also a supervisor for Dr. Badafi at Karara University when Dr. Badafi was in Japan. Firstly, uh, I will introduce the overview of our department and some of our research fields. This time, uh, unfortunately, I cannot participate in Q1A session at the end of this fair. So if you have any question after this online fair, please contact me at the email address that I will inform you later. So let's begin with the overview of our department. Graduate School of Dental Science is located in Kyushu University Hospital Campus. It is close to the, both the city area and the sea, so you can enjoy your life uh, in your research life in an enjoyable and relaxed environment. The graduate school currently has uh, 156 PhD students including 33 overseas students. Our 33 international PhD students are from nine countries, mainly from Asia, and more than half of them live on some kind of scholarship. We offer students the opportunity to undertake doctoral studies in English, and the program is designed to provide students uh, with the skills necessary to complete high-level research in dentistry. Before entering uh, our PhD program, uh, all applicants uh, with any scientific background are expected to have completed a uh, uh, master degree or equivalent which means 18-year uh, curriculum education. If the number of years of your study is less than 18 years, you can be accepted as a research student for the past year or two. However, there are exceptions, so please ask individually for details. Our PhD course uh, offers two types of degrees, Doctor of Dental Science and Doctor of Science. Please contact uh, consult uh, with your future supervisor to decide which degree is most appropriate for you. Here is organization of our graduate school of dental science. 
You can get research information in detail from this link. Let me introduce some of our research fields. In Department of Endodontology and Operative Dentistry, Professor Maeda's group is leading research towards the practical application of IPS cells. Among the stem cells in the oral cavity, periodontal ligament stem cells have the highest regenerative ability. However, it is difficult to differentiate those stem cells directly from IPS cells. So they first differentiated uh, IPS cells into neural crest cells. As a result of culturing these neural crest cells on the extracellular matrix of primary periodontal ligament, they were found to have periodontal ligament stem-like cells called IPDLSG cells. Professor Maeda's group is now planning to examine the periodontal tissue regenerative ability of these IPDLS cells to apply it clinically in the near future. In the Department of Biomaterials, Professor Ishikawa is a leader in the development of carbonate appetite bone filling materials. For the first time in the world, his group found a method for artificially synthesis of carbonate appetite granules and blocks, which are the composition of bone. Furthermore, based on the results, uh, they succeeded in putting the complete artificial bone into practical use in collaboration with companies. From section of oral and natural facial oncology, Professor Nakamura's group is leading research on molecular mechanism of oral cancer progression, mainly via Delta and P63. The group what has elucidated the molecular mechanism of each process of oral cancer progressions using multiple approaches and has a lot of uh, reports to date. Professor Nakamura's group is also a world leader in IgG4 related disease, which is systematic disease characterized by elevated serum IgG4 and the infiltration of IgG4 plasma, positive plasma cells in multiple organs. In the maxillofacial area, uh, necrotic disease and kidney tumors were recently referred to as IgG4-related disease. However, the mechanism and meaning of IgG4 production in this disease remains to be clarified. Recently, his group re reveals that the specific TH subsets, uh, including TH2 regulatory T cells, uh, follicular T cells, and CD4 positive cytotoxic T cells, play key role in germinal center formation and IgG4 production. In addition, activated macrophages uh, promote TH2 to TH2 immune reaction via toll-like receptor 7 and IL-33 signaling. Finally, uh, our department also has OBT Research Center, which is a research organization composed of several young PIs. O means uh, oral. Uh, oral health, B means brain health, and T means total health. These interrelationships are inseparable to create a healthy world in the future. Main, many research themes are being carried out in this center, such as studies on sex differences in energy metabolism and cognitive function. That is on a regular basis of biological defense system regulation mediated by protease reaction. 
and the studies on predisposition to uh, non-communicable uh, lifestyle diseases regulated by uh, environmental factors and epigenomic memories. For example, we are performing animal experiments to elucidate how maternal diet during pregnancy uh, affects post-adult health and disease in the offspring. OBT Research Center holds an uh, international symposium every year, and researchers from young to senior have presentations and participa participate in discussion there. There are too many things I can say so far, but the time is limited. So please visit our website for more information. If you click the uh, education icon on our website, you can see more detailed information. We hope to meet you in Kyushu University. Our fun research life is waiting for you here. If you have further questions after this online fair, please email to the following address. My presentation is that all. Uh, next, uh, Professor Toshio Kukita will say a few words greeting for you. Please. Wait, okay. Professor Kukita. Can, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Professor Kukita, you, you are mute, muted, muted. ちょっと先生。え、ちょっと待って面白いですね。
ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。So I'm sorry I couldn't thank you because I was offline temporarily. So now with Professor Kita, my supervisor,、uh, I'm so proud that you are with us today. Yeah, but I, I cannot. I cannot.、Uh, yes, yes, Professor Kita. Okay, Kukita Sensei, we could hear you.、Oh, can you hear me? Yes, but please uh, share your uh, if you have a presentation or you will、uh, talk in a video. or... But uh, I, I cannot, I, I cannot uh, uh, put uh, my slide.、Okay. So, maybe, okay, so. So, so can, can, you hear, can you hear me? So, if uh, I cannot、uh, put my slide, so I can just、uh, work in work. I can just speak, okay? Good morning. Good morning, Kokita Sensei. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Do you have two accounts are open? Please,、uh, yeah. only one account. Use only one account. You use、yes, only one account, account I have. Okay. So, but,、uh, so, sorry, sorry. Kukita Sensei. Hi. Slide me, Masu. Can you share my slide? Oh, sorry, sorry. But if you have other windows open other than this window, please、mm -hmm. close. Close. But、uh, okay, so. uh, just a just moment, please. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Ah, sorry. كل دكتور نوعها تام كل مجيب معاه هو أصلا. So I'm very sorry for you to have some trouble. So, so, everybody, come here. Yes, Kukita Sensei, we can hear you. Yes, okay. Okay, so my name is、uh, Toshio Kukita, a professor of molecular cell biology and oral anatomy, a faculty of dental science at、uh, Kish University. So,、uh, here I would like to show uh, my uh, major research friends in the world. I have learned many things、uh, concerning all cell biology from、uh, Dr. David Brudman in USA. And I also have best friends in、uh, Dr. Michelle Orenfo、uh, in UK, England. As, uh, uh, so, uh, Dr. Brudman is the 
great hematologist and the father of osteoclast research. And uh, Dr. Uh, Arepo is expert in regenerative medicine. So, uh, and many persons came to my laboratory from several countries. So, in China, China, Indonesia, and Syria. And, uh, and works as postdoctoral research associates or as the graduate students. So some persons are working as lab staff in my laboratory. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Tamir Valerie came to my lab from Cairo, Egypt in 2014 and worked as an excellent graduate student for four years. So it is a very complicated subject. Here I show the title of his research in my laboratory. Uh, it's a complicated set, sorry, but uh, they search, searching for novel regulatory cell search molecules expressed on osteoplast. Uh, contributing to the fine modulation of bone in modern. The osteoblast is the bone forming cell, and osteoclast is bone eating cell. So, although this research was a very difficult uh, and tough project, uh, but uh, he works very, very hard. But of course, we did join research life in Fukuoka. So finally, he successfully found an important regulatory molecule in bone modeling. And this osteoblast specific A7 antigen was revealed to be a uh, novel regulatory regulator of classification and a unique modulator of osteoclast recruitment. So his, uh, his finding, his finding is quite unique finding. So Dr. Tamir Valerie has done such an excellent work in my laboratory. So this is my uh, members. So uh, Dr. Tamir has published three nice papers listed like this uh, during stay in Japan. So that's uh, Dr. Tamer Badley performed a beautiful work in Kyushu University. So I'd like to celebrate a wonderful international relationship between Gerana University and Kyushu University. So Shukra uh, Laka. Thank you very much. So that's it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kokita, Kokita Sensei. I'm so proud that uh, uh, you shared uh, our, uh, you contributed today in our webinar. And uh, actually, uh, I'm so grateful for uh, what you have teached me throughout my PhD study uh, since 2014 till 2018. And, and I'm still learning from you. So uh, thank you so much for everything and thank you for your contribution today. Thank you so much. Okay, today, uh, now I will share my screen for my presentation. I think my presentation is a light presentation and will give an idea about uh, life in Japan throughout my experience. So let me share my slide with you, please.
Is it clear now? Full screen. Yes. Okay. So uh, my presentation is a light one, and uh, it's uh, about uh, explaining uh, life in Japan, uh, uh, not uh, not in so much details because uh, four years of living in Japan needs uh, so much time and uh, several presentations. But in brief, I will uh, uh, um, explain my experience. So uh, first, I'm so happy. Uh, to be uh, 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 an organizer for this webinar. And also uh, there was a teamwork uh, uh, starting from Professor Mohammed Shinawi, the acting vice president. Uh, he is actually was involved in every step during the preparation of this uh, webinar. Uh, or, and uh, uh, we, are, we were following his wise uh, instructions and guidance so I want to thank him. Uh, also, uh, the extreme care and support from Professor Ashraf Haider, the uh, president of Galala University, and Professor Tara Abul Maati, the act, uh, acting vice president for academic affairs. Uh, uh, they were so caring and supporting for us. So I want to thank them so much. Also, uh, the mm, team members that shared the organization uh, starting from uh, Dr. Oki Yutaro from Japan, uh, Professor Tamer Nasr from Egypt, uh, pro, uh, Engineer Mohammed Abdullah from the IT department in Galala University, uh, Engineer Mohammed Ali Poster uh, uh, Design, and uh, uh, actually uh, I was not alone. There was team members. So uh, Japan, as we uh, say in Japanese, it's Nihon. And this is a flag of Japan, and uh, it symbolizes to the land of the rising sun. So Japan uh, is uh, considered as a part of the Asian continent. And uh, um, Japan, of course, the capital is Tokyo. And uh, 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 to the east of Japan, there is the Sea of Japan and uh, Korea, China, and Russia. Uh, to, the, uh, to the west, sorry, to the east, the Pacific Ocean. So Japan is composed of um, thousands of islands. However, the main islands, as you could see, these are the main uh, islands, including, including uh, Kyushu Island in the south. And uh, Japan uh, is divided into prefectures, about 47 prefectures. Uh, um, and uh, of course, we're going to talk today about uh, prefecture 40, Fukuoka that I lived uh, for four years of my life. So uh, these are some facts about Japan. The population was uh, in 2019, 126 millions and uh, ranked 11th in the world and uh, making up of 1.6% of the world's total. The currency, uh, the Japanese yen, the 100 Japanese yen is equals to uh, 0 0.95. United States dollars is equal to 14.8 Egyptian pounds. So I will talk about Japan uh, from my uh, point of view, my life in Japan. So my first visit to Japan was uh, to Sapporo in the uh, island of Hokkaido uh, in 2009 and 2012 uh, uh, in a conference. So it was just a short visit. Then I decided to live in Japan. So. I uh, searched for a scholarship, uh, and uh, actually, uh, Kokita Sensei, Professor Kokita, has accepted me in his lab, uh, and uh, I uh, studied my PhD uh, as a PhD candidate in Fukuoka for four years, um, and uh, I visited other cities also in Japan, like uh, Osaka in Kansai region. It was uh, 2017, and it was also a conference. And uh, Nagasaki also, I visited Nagasaki in 2018 a conference. And finally, I visited the capital, Tokyo, in 2018. It was uh, just a trip. Uh, so, but uh, actually, Fukuoka is my beloved city because I lived uh, four years of my life. So, this is Fukuoka, and as 
the professors and uh, my colleagues has explained, Fukuoka is considered uh, the heart of um, uh, Kyushu Island uh, in the southern of Japan. And I actually, I have studied in Kyushu University. Kyushu University is one of the uh, top ranked prestigious universities in Japan and uh, worldwide. So I'm proud uh, that I have uh, graduated. I have been graduated from Kyushu University. I studied uh, spe specifically in the hospital campus. And uh, as a professor said, there are, there, were, there are many campuses. So the hospital campus, uh, uh, the uh, medical sector is in the hospital campus. So uh, I studied my PhD in the Graduate School of Dental Science, 2014 to 2018. Uh, actually, the flight, uh, actually, the flight to Japan from Cairo to Tokyo is um, a long, very long trip, actually. It's very exhausting uh, trip, but uh, at the same time, uh, it's an exciting one. Uh, so it takes you uh, about 13 hours uh, uh, flight from uh, Cairo to Tokyo without stops. So actually, if you add the transit uh, transfer time, it may take you about maybe 24 hours with transfers. So one day, maybe. So, uh, and this, if you are gonna go to Tokyo, but if you are go, go, gonna go to other cities inside Japan, so you have to take domestic flights. So you have to add more two or three hours uh, uh, to the 13 hours plus the transfer time. So actually uh, it's a very long trip. Uh, my first challenge, actually, when I visited Japan was the language. So Japanese people are not so familiar with English language. So uh, I was uh, so surprised that uh, I, couldn't, um, I couldn't conduct conversations with Japanese people, actually. Uh, actually, the Japanese language is uh, composed of uh, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. So if you want to uh, write a phrase... So uh, um, you should learn the three uh, types, the uh, hiragana, katakana, and kanji, like this phrase. So uh, uh, for me, it was a little bit uh, complicated. But actually, I, I just, um, from the, my conversation with the Japanese people throughout my life, uh, maybe I'm a beginner in, uh, in the Japanese language, but uh, uh, of course, it's a benefit to know a new language. So uh, for students who are intending to uh, study for a short term or for long term uh, study in Japan, I highly recommend to learn Japanese language before departure, before traveling to Japan or after arrival to Japan, uh, maybe uh, Kishu University arrange uh, uh, Japanese language courses. Uh, uh, so uh, I think it's very useful if you're gonna live in Japan. So behavior and etiquette in Japan, this was another challenge because they have uh, actually unique culture. And um, if you are intending to visit Japan, so you have to know uh, about their behavior, about their etiquette and culture. Of course, this needs um, many presentations, but I will just, uh, some, some I will just mention some points. First, uh, I was surprised that they never shake hands. So the Japanese people bow to greet one another, like this picture, and uh, also the degree of bowing. So old and special people get special greetings. So very low bowing for uh, older people and uh, for uh, people like professors of the university and uh, like that. So the lower you bow, the more respect you give. Uh, but uh, for a foreign visitor, maybe uh, bowing the head slightly, since no one expecting foreigners to generally understand the subtle nuances of bowing. So just maybe slight bow because you are a foreigner is accepted uh, for the Japanese. Uh, also, the Japanese, uh, they hide their own feeling instead of hurting another's. So this is also another uh, uh, feature of the Japanese personality, and this is a very good feature. Also, uh, everything in Japan is, is strictly organized, starting from the streets. So uh, when you live in Japan, you have to follow the rules and the law strictly. 
uh, in the streets, as you could see, uh, in the even in the uh, the car parking is organized like this, and they have a good idea of uh, multi-level vertical parking. So, in order to use uh, to save the space uh, like this, maybe uh, uh, two uh, floors or from two to five floors. Also, I I have seen in Japan the multi-level parking. Also, everything is organized regarding the garbage sorting in Japan. This is uh, very strict, and if you uh, if you didn't sort your garbage, it will not be collected. So I think generally in Japan everything is strictly organized. Regarding the housing, um, as soon as I arrived to Japan, uh, I stayed in the Fukuoka International House, which is considered the students' dorm. Uh, 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 of course, there is an agreement between Kyushu University and such house, and also there are other dormitories uh, inside the campuses of Kyushu University. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I was uh, I was surprised that my room actually was 16 uh, square meters. It was actually surprising for me, and uh, also the kitchen, maybe shared kitchen. So uh, as a general rule, the uh, Japanese apartments are significantly very small in size. So it was uh, surprising for me in the beginning, but uh, after that, I got used to this uh, and uh, for four years of my life. So I uh, stayed in the dorm for maybe four months, and then, then I moved to a private apartment uh, just near the campus. Uh, Actually, there is uh, for the accommodation in Japan, there is something unique, uh, like the capsule hotels. These types of hotels uh, are unique type of basic and she and stay in one of the capsules like this. So each guest occupies a capsule, essentially like a bed-sized uh, pod that you can close either with a door or a curtain. And these capsules are arranged in rows, as you could see in the figures, and double stacked. Each capsule has a TV and has a power outlet for charging your devices. Uh, but your belongings, you have to leave your belongings outside the capsule. They are usually stored in a locker provided by the hotel. So I think this is a kind of uh, unique accommodation. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Japan started it and then it spread maybe throughout the world, but it's very unique in Japan. Uh, transportation, of course, uh, in addition to the ordinary uh, uh, transportation means, Japan uh, uh, is, is very famous uh, uh, by bicycles. So people are widely using bicycles in Japan for all age groups and for all social standings. And also all the streets have uh, uh, its infrastructure ready for uh, this uh, 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 transportation mean. So uh, every street ha has a parking uh, for bicycles, as you could see in the figure. So uh, you may uh, have your own bike or you can rent a bike uh, from a hotel or from uh, anywhere you stay. Uh, also another unique transportation mean is the Shinkansen. The Shinkansen or the bullet trains is the fastest and most convenient way of discovering Japan, such kind of trains um, may reach top speed of 320 kilometers per hour. And this allows you to get the, uh, wherever you need to go in a very short time. And there is a, a, um, a complicated, there is a big uh, uh, network uh, of Shinkansen lines that connects northern to the southern of Japan, as you could see in the figure. Food, actually, the food in Japan was a little bit challenging, uh, but I will just uh, mention the most famous Japanese uh, dishes and uh, cuisines. So uh, usually in Fukuoka, there are kind of uh, what's called yatai. Yatai is like a, a food cart, like uh, as you see in the figure, and uh, the people may gather maybe from uh, eight to 10 people and they talk together and eat and share eating of food. And this is uh, very famous in Fukuoka streets, Fukuoka Yatai. Also, uh, as you know, the sushi is uh, one of the uh, most uh, famous cuisine, Japanese cuisines. 
And uh, of course, it's like rice and with a topping of a raw fish. Of course, there are many types of sushi, uh, but this may be the most famous. And you have to learn how to use the chopsticks, the ohashi. So uh, maybe I, uh, I it, it took me about maybe three or, or four months to learn how to use the, these chopsticks because not all restaurants um, offer spoon and uh, uh, ordinary uh, uh, tools. So uh, some restaurants provide only, uh, offer only chopsticks. So you have to learn how to use it. Also the sashimi, which is a raw fish or meat uh, served with vegetables. And uh, also the tempura udon. It's like uh, noodles with some uh, maybe fried shrimp or and some vegetables. So it's known as tempura udon. Actually, um, as, a, as, a, uh, as a Muslim, uh, it was a little bit difficult for me, other than the seafood, to eat other uh, uh, food. Uh, so uh, now there are foundations in Japan uh, to uh, ensure that the food is totally halal food. So uh, it's now extensively distributing in all the Japan stores uh, offering halal food. Uh, and so now the, I think Muslims can uh, comfortably uh, buy from these stores, uh, uh, ensuring that this food is halal food. The climate in Japan actually, uh, the climate is cold in the north, especially in Hokkaido, in the north or northern of Japan, where snow and ice dominate in winter, and it's temperate in the central regions and almost tropical on the small southern islands in Kyushu and other uh, uh, southern islands. So uh, uh, today is the temperature, Wednesday, 17th of February, is minus six in Hokkaido, and it becomes warmer as you go to the south, uh, three degrees Celsius in uh, maybe Kyushu and Fukuoka. Uh, so the rains are abundant almost everywhere in Japan, and uh, especially between uh, summer and autumn, the country is hit by torrential rains and typhoons. So it may be a little bit risky, but it's okay. So, uh, but um, however, you can enjoy uh, the seasons, the four seasons in Japan, in summer, the Fukuoka Beach, you can enjoy swimming and other activities. Uh, in the spring, in the spring, uh, there is a unique uh, uh, sherry blossoms uh, in the spring, uh, uh, which is known in Japanese as Sakura. And this is very characteristic for the uh, spring. And uh, during the spring season, the people visit the gardens to take photographs uh, for the Sakura. And it's really exciting. Also in winter, uh, usually in Fukuoka, there is no snow. But uh, um, uh, uh, I have uh, had um, maybe during my life in Fukuoka, maybe two years, uh, I have uh, seen the snow. Uh, so, But it's not frequent in Fukuoka. It's more frequent in uh, Hokkaido and northern of Japan. Uh, also in the autumn, you can... Um, enjoy the uh, Fukuoka gardens and the colored flowers of Fukuoka. So actually Japan has a wonderful, magnificent nature uh, and also Fukuoka as well. So uh, I need to talk about my laboratory life. So uh, in Kyushu University, I uh, was studying in the Department of Molecular Cell Biology and Oral Anatomy. And uh, I'm so grateful that my supervisor was Professor Kokita. Uh, uh, we say professor in Japan, we, we, we say Kokita Sensei. So Sensei means professor. So uh, uh, Kokita Sensei was my supervisor. I, I, I'm so proud of this. And I'm so grateful that he joined us today. So uh, I was um, actually, I was lucky to have been awarded the Japanese government scholarship, the mixed scholarship. And I think. Uh, my colleagues and, uh, and the, the speakers, the professors, have given an idea about the next scholarship. So actually, the laboratory life in Japan is very hard, especially for a PhD candidate. So you have to uh, work hard uh, uh, every day, uh, 24 hours. Uh, so uh, as you could see here, this is the attendance panel 
So if your name is in white, so it means that you are attending, if uh, you are attending in the lab. If your name is red, so it's, it means that you, uh, uh, you are at home, not in the lab. So usually for a PhD candidate, it's always, uh, it's always on the white color. So you have, there is no time limits and maybe you may be uh, uh, attending all day uh, in the lab, uh, writing the manuscripts in the uh, working uh, in the culture room or uh, taking some uh, photographs for your specimens. So actually it's, uh, uh, it's hard work. Also, there are, uh, beside the hard work in the, maybe in the weekends or so you may, there are campus activities. So what's very uh, interesting in Kyushu University campuses, that uh, there is a kind of campus diversity and intercultural uh, exchange. So various uh, nationalities, uh, uh, various cultures. So there is, there is a communication uh, between uh, uh, cultures and uh, between other people. So this is very interesting. And there is a, an uh, association in Kyushu University known as Kyushu University Foreign Student Association, uh, KUFTA. This association uh, uh, may, um, will have um, uh, frequently have a president each year of different nationality. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, association usually organizes trips uh, uh, in Japan and sometimes outside Japan and activities and uh, uh, allowing for intercultural exchange between international students and the Japanese people. Uh, so it's uh, like an examples of the events organized by Kofsa, trip to Nagasaki and bowling tournament, uh, trips, travel tournaments, events and competitions. So this is a uh, sushi competition that we have shared, organized by Kofsa. Also, Japanese art competition. And sometimes uh, the members of our lab, we go maybe after we finish our work at night to, for a baseball uh, tournament a match. Uh, so there are uh, uh, activities, uh, interesting activities, actually, uh, in Kyushu University. So, and finally, after I finished the four years of hard work and hard research, I presented uh, uh, my thesis in front of the respectable professors and the respectable referee panel. And finally, uh, uh, I got my PhD uh, in 2018. And uh, the figure on the left side is a speech, my speech, uh, in front of Kyushu University presidents on behalf of all PhD graduates in the official PhD graduation ceremony, as I was proud to be selected to give the speech on behalf of all the PhD graduates. And the peak on the right side is uh, uh, my PhD uh, certificate. Uh, actually, I'm so proud that uh, I have been graduated from one of the top ranked prestigious universities in Japan, Kyushu University. Thank you so much, arigato gozaimasu in Japanese, and I wish the webinar is useful for all of you. And uh, now we are gonna open the session, uh, session for questions. So uh, if you, uh, if our guests have a question, uh, we appreciate you uh, uh, raise your hand and we will let you ask your question. Yes. Uh. <coughs> yes. Yes, uh, Professor uh, Muhammad Aziz, I think. Hey, uh, good morning. Good afternoon mm -hmm. for colleagues in Japan. I'm very proud to uh, opportunity to talk to colleagues in Japan. Uh, my name is Mohamed Aziz. I'm uh, Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences uh, at Galala University. Uh, we are going to open or to offer 
two measures in Japanese language. One is for education and the other one for translation. Uh, it, this programs two uh, measures in coordination with the uh, University of Hiroshima. Uh, we have developed this uh, at the Ministry of Higher Education under supervision of His Excellency Minister himself. And we, uh, we uh, sent these programs to Kyushu colleagues, uh, uh, sorry, Hiroshima colleagues, and they um, reviewed it and revised and sent it and accepted the full uh, measures courses. Uh, these courses uh, will include it, uh, 1, 000, uh, uh, sorry, 128 uh, credits. Uh, the first two years in general education in uh, Japanese language and starting from third uh, years in two uh, different uh, tracks, uh, one for education, another one for translation. We are very interested to extend our cooperation to other universities in Japan, uh, for example, Kyushu University, and I would like to thank all colleagues who we seen today and uh, also uh, our colleagues, Dr. Tamer and, and also the top uh, managers of Galala University for giving us this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor uh, Ahmad Aziz. Uh, so any one of the speakers want to uh, Answer the question of Professor Muhammad Aziz. Yeah, to uh, to clarify my question, if uh, University uh, uh, Kyushu University has a similar programs, if they are interested to cooperate with us too. We are very interested to expand our cooperation to other universities in Japan, not only, Kyush, uh, not only Hiroshima University, but we are very interested to extend our uh, cooperation to your university. Do you have such programs in social sciences, social and human sciences as well? Uh, Professor Temernos, are you still with us? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can I can answer it. Uh, yeah. Yes, I am here. I think Professor Oki can answer yeah. this. Professor Oki, yeah. please. Yeah, uh, I I myself my my uh, research topic is international law, so one of the parts one of the social science, and of course we have a uh, department of social science and the human sciences, but uh, we don't really have specific faculty focusing on Japanese languages or or translation. But uh, for the education of international students, we have we are creating and progressing the program for education of Japanese program. So maybe we can see some uh, kind of co collaboration opportunity in the future. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much for your uh, meaningful you. information. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Oki. And uh, now, uh, if there is uh, other question from Mr. Ahmad Nuishi. Yes, Mr. or Dr. Ahmad, I don't know. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. I am uh, Dr. Ahmad Nuishi, uh, Associate Professor at uh, the field of Advanced Basic Science, Galala University. Uh, thank you all for this uh, nice and rich uh, webinar. For introducing the Egyptian culture, uh, the Egyptian and Japanese culture, of course. And uh, Japanese culture is very rich in, uh, and famous in the scientific uh, community. I will keep it very simple and short. What is the process to initiate uh, research exchange between uh, uh, your university and Galano University? That's my question. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. For your question, of course, I know you, but uh, maybe uh, your name was, your picture was small uh, before. <laughs> no but of no course, I know you. Thank you for your attendance and for your question. 
So uh, maybe Professor Tamer Nasr could answer the question. Yeah. Yes, of course, uh, you can uh, do th this kind of collaboration with Kyushu University, but uh, you have to um, con make, um, I mean, uh, you, you have to con contact the specialized professors in the field to do this kind of collaboration. And of course, you can send for me the details and uh, I can uh, yeah, ask for you in Kyushu University. Uh, for the procedures and so on. Then come back to you again. Uh, thanks, Dr. Taylor. But we need uh, what, 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 we, what I can call a uniform process, not just based on a personal <coughs> contact, so personal, yeah, personal communication. We just need a, a, a map road for initiating uh, a, a complete process for research, research, research exchange between Gilal University and Yukoshi University? Uh, I mean, uh, like this is not, uh, from, uh, according to my knowledge, is not available. Um, only you, uh, you have to apply, uh, the person is have to apply for the professors uh, to get acceptance uh, to do his uh, postdoc or uh, like this uh, research. Also, uh, uh, department to department collaboration can be done. So, uh, uh, or faculty to faculty collaboration or MOU can be done. This is possible and uh, uh, occurs in Egypt. So, so some faculties in Egypt, uh, on some departments in some universities, only at the department scale can make a collaboration with a, a complementary department in Japan. So, for example, uh, uh, in Helwan University, there is a collaboration between uh, Merkaz Ulum al Fada uh, and uh, Kyushu University, and also in um, uh, Faculty of Engineering, Mansoura University, there is a kind of collaboration between this university and uh, this uh, this faculty and the Faculty of Engineering in uh, 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 Kyushu University. So the collaboration uh, can be not only uh, between university and university, university level, but can be on faculty level or even uh, department level. So just uh, you have to start the connection with the department and uh, negotiation, and uh, then uh, if there is agreement, you, we can you can make uh, such uh, um, you, uh, between the two uh, uh, between the two uh, two uh, two organizations. So uh, after that. You can collaborate in research. Uh, you can go there and do your research. Uh, or, and uh, of course, they can come to your university and do the, uh, their uh, research and so on. So this needs uh, at the beginning to initiate uh, contact between the two uh, organizations, even uh, the, at the level of the department level. Thank you my idea. Thanks, 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 thanks to them. Yeah, thank you, thank you uh, Dr. Tabernas, for your answer. I think uh, when we, uh, uh, in the near future, uh, uh, sign an agreement with Kyushu University, I think the process will be much easier, uh, of course, and it will be through, uh, through uh, Kyushu University Cairo office and through you. So we, uh, hopefully, uh, we are looking forward to such uh, uh, mutual collaboration and uh, partnership. Yes. Thank you so much. In the beginning, there should be uh, MOU between the two institutions. Uh, yes. After that, uh, every uh, uh, collaboration on the research can be done after that. Yes, thank you so much. So uh, the question from uh, Yusuf, Yusuf Walid, maybe is a student at Galala University Physical Therapy. Yes, Yusuf. Your question, please. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Assalamu alaikum, konnichiwa. Uh, my name is Yusuf Walid and I'm a physical therapy student. Um, so, uh, I know about Japan from um, TV shows like animes and stuff. So, I was wondering if um, uh, Japan can make uh, events in Galan universities uh, where uh, we can know more about the Japanese cultures, uh, like festivals or like uh, you know, um, sharing books and mangas and stuff. 
also uh, I know that um, Japan uses uh, special ways in physical therapy uh, other than the, uh, the Western world. Uh, the East world generally uses like plants and herbs in physical therapy. So it would be really interesting if uh, uh, we can study uh, its ways. Uh, so I was wondering if this can happen in Galar universities, events and festivals and stuff like this. Thank you, Yusuf, for your question and for your attendance. And I think I could answer the first part regarding the events uh, to be organized at Galala University. So uh, I explain more about the Japanese culture. Uh, I think uh, in the near future, we need to contact uh, some uh, organizations or foundations here in Egypt. I think uh, uh, we may uh, do this as soon as possible, like the Japan Foundation in Cairo, and uh, we can ask them and invite them to organize uh, such uh, maybe Japanese language courses and other events uh, uh, to, to allow the students to know much about uh, the Japanese culture. Regarding the second part of your question, I think uh, um, if uh, one of the speakers have, uh, one of the professors have an answer, has an answer for his question regarding the physical therapy, Speciality. Mm, maybe you can uh, take some training. Uh, the students at Galala University can take uh, training in physical therapy uh, if they can visit uh, for a short term uh, Kyushu University for study in Japan uh, in summer. Uh, maybe this be uh, helpful. Or they can go to for a um, uh, short visit as a research student for one or three months, as I show in my presentation. So uh, this is my answer. But uh, uh, don't I don't expect someone come from Kyushu University to do uh, some training here uh, in the near future. Maybe in the far future may happen. Thank you, uh, Professor Emir, for your answer. Okay, Yusuf, you got it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, the question from Bishoy Sabri. Yes, please. Bishoy? Bishoy Sabri. Okay, Bishoy is not with us. Professor Shinnewi is here. Dr. Temer? Yes, Professor Shinnewi. Dr. Temer? Yes, yes, Dr. Shinnewi. I could hear you clearly. Yes, Dr. Shinnewi, you clearly. Temer, I think there is someone wants to ask a question before I give uh, just a small uh, comment. Yes, uh, but no one is raising his hand. Please, uh, our guests, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Okay, Nurhan. Nurhan Ahmed. Yes, Nurhan, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we could hear you. Uh, welcome. Th uh, thank you so much for this resourceful uh, webinar. I was just asking about um, the student exchange program and well, uh, when uh, will it start? Thank you so much. I think this question is for Professor uh, Shinawi. I, 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 the question was not clear. Please, can you repeat it, Norhan? When will the student exchange program will start? Uh, actually, we're working on that. Uh, with the COVID-19 situation, we cannot uh, give exact timing for the for the exchange and the traveling. That's why we are concentrating now on the webinars and exploring. Once the COVID-19 situation is clear, and we can and the travel is the restrictions for travels is over, we will work. We will be prepared to have this exchange uh, with different universities. Okay, thank you so much. 
Thank you, uh, dear Vice President, for your answer, and thank you, Nurhan, and for your question. He, uh, as we are approaching four minutes, I think his, uh, Dr. Ashraf, the President, has just joined us. So I think if no question or no comments, we, the closing will be from uh, Dr. Ashraf. So uh, we have just uh, one question, uh, Dr. Shinawi, from Bishoy Sabri Sobhi. Yes, Bishoy, please ask your question. Hmm. Shoy? Maybe he has a technical problem, maybe. Okay, I think uh, there is no more questions now. So, uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf Ghalib. Uh, uh, okay, Nuna Abrahman, he has asked it already. Abrahman says. Dr. Abdurrahman, Dr. Abdurrahman, you have a question? Yes, yes. Yeah, is it okay? So, uh, actually, I'm, uh, my name is Abdurrahman Zakaria, and I'm an assistant professor at Kyush University and uh, EJUST Center of Kyush University. And it's really my pleasure to be here and uh, to see uh, Dr. Tanner. He is uh, my old friend in Kyushu and uh, Dr. Uki also. Um, uh, just to have a quick question about the uh, cooperation strategy between uh, Galala University and uh, Ajust Center in Kyushu University. That if we can start some collaboration through the Ajust Center, especially in engineering and sciences programs. So if you have any uh, plan for that, uh, maybe uh, I want to hear. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Abrahman. Of course, uh, uh, we are we were and we are still uh, friends since I was in Kyushu. Thank you for your question. So uh, may, may some people may maybe they don't know what is EJUST. So it is the Egyptian Japan University for Science and Technology. And I think the specialities yeah, available yes. are uh, just engineering, maybe, or and computer science, like that. I think. Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Tamer, it is. Uh, actually, it's a uh, center. The Egypt, Egypt, just is a uh, place in Egypt, in Alexandria and Burgil Arab, and this uh, university is uh, Egyptian Japanese University. But each uh, four universities in, in Japan has a center uh, for the to support the Egypt and Japan relation, in, in especially in science and uh, engineering. So we have uh, in Kyushu we have three programs. We have CBE for chemical and petroleum engineering, and for electrical and computer science. Uh, program we support in, from the Kyushu University side. We support these three programs in in uh, Egypt Japan University of and so is my my uh, suggestion that we can do some collaboration also with different uh, Egyptian universities. Hmm. Uh, I think uh, I, uh, it was uh, this question is more was most suitable for Professor Gadel Adi, but I think uh, he has left the conversation. Uh, maybe Professor Tamir uh, Nasr may have uh, an answer. <laughs> yes, it, it is possible. Yes, possible to do uh, like this collaboration between uh, EJUST and uh, Galala University uh, through the Kyushu University uh, Center at EJUST. But uh, first of all, there should be MOU as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So oh, MOU is a key for everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, we have some way for the MOU. Like, and start from the uh, low level of like just contacting professor, and then the professor himself apply for the MOU of the departments, and then mm -hmm. it's uh, expanded to like uh, join another department, so that you can do it with, uh, for example, with the graduate school. Uh, for example, the grad school that I'm working for is uh, IGSES, Interdisciplinary Graduate School of Science Engineering. You can start from one professor and then 
his department joined this uh, uh, partnership. And after that, uh, together you apply for the uh, partnership uh, on the level of the grad school. So I think this is the uh, easiest way to have a partnership with a grad school or a department. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, as you said, it is the easiest uh, MOU as a new yes, level. Yes. So department to department. Yes, and then you can expand by by uh, joining another other departments. So maybe it's uh, yeah, you can start from this small level because if you start from the uh, maybe a big level or uh, like high level of university to university, it's quite uh, yeah, it takes maybe one year or more. Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me this. Thank you so much, Thank you very much. for your question. Thank you, Thank you so much, Dr. Rahman, for your question. And uh, Dr. Oki, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, no, no. Okay, okay. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. So, uh, any questions, any other questions? Because we need uh, to close now. So, uh, uh, back to you, Professor Dr. Shinawi. Dr. Shinnawi. Back to you, Professor Shinnawi. Are you still with us? Yes, thank you so much, uh, Tamer and our uh, uh, colleagues from Kyushu and uh, Dr. Tamer Badawi from Kyushu office here in Cairo and uh, it was really interesting and exposing our students and our colleagues uh, in Galala University and other places to the experience in Japan and we hope that uh, the next time we'll have a webinar about specific uh, point that could be of uh, interest for research uh, between both Kyushu and Galala. But before I close uh, we have uh, to hear uh, the closing from uh, our president Dr. Ashraf Haid. Dr. Ashraf, back to you. Professor Dr. Ashraf. Uh, unmute Dr. Ashraf, please, Tamer. Please unmute uh, engineer uh, Mohammed, Dr. Ashraf Haider. I think uh, he is unmuted, uh, Dr. Shinawi. So I, I think he need to press uh, on the unmute button. Please check. Unmuted. Uh, yes, Professor Ashraf is uh, raising his hands. The president is raising his hand. That's it. Okay. <laughs> now it's okay. You hear me, everybody, right? Yes, yes, dear president. Yes. Okay. So I was uh, muted from uh, other sides. So. Uh, it, of course, it's a, a great honor for Galala University to start the collaboration. Uh, as mentioned um, by uh, the Vice President professors, as well as all your colleagues and uh, partners from uh, Egypt and uh, from Japan and uh, collaborative organizations, uh, I think uh, the uh, best approach is to select, uh, as Mohammed was just saying, uh, some um, ideas in order to uh, try to launch it, uh, maybe it's engineering or maybe in dentistry, whatever, in material sciences. So we should work on this, finding an idea uh, or um, a, a part of uh, interdisciplinary research uh, that could be shared uh, between our junior staff as well as uh, 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 staff members uh, from Japan at department level, as mentioned uh, from a while, because this is the easiest and fastest way I'm very, very happy to see uh, our students uh, participating in this, in this webinar. And I think uh, the, our students uh, from uh, le level one 
uh, just uh, coming from high school uh, are very keen uh, to join and to understand the Japanese culture. And I think this is uh, one important uh, uh, point in the strategy of collaboration, cultural exchange. And I think this is uh, very, very important. And I myself, at young age, uh, visited Japan uh, in Komamoto uh, for um, a, a couple of months. And I think it, it had an impact on my, uh, on my future and how precision Japanese people are in dealing with endoscopy, uh, since I'm a surgeon, uh, uh, and um, uh, classifying uh, certain specific research in early gastric cancer. Uh, they are very meticulous and precise. And I think this is a cultural inheritance. So we, we, we need to get this um, incorporated for our junior staff uh, and the students. I'm very glad uh, to have them with us, actually. Uh, again, uh, the uh, a memorandum of understandings uh, through the JSPS, as well as uh, uh, either individually or institutionally. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Mohammed Shinnawi will continue discussions with Tamer uh, in the office in Cairo and uh, with our Tamer here at Galala University in order to uh, formulate um, the memorandum uh, that will be uh, applicable. Most important is to create a list of activities that. Uh, is probably applicable and to happen in the coming future, in the near future, as mentioned before, because we need to execute this and uh, to have this uh, uh, in light uh, as soon as possible, uh, particularly since we have already collaboration with other uh, Japanese universities. This will empower our position as well as um, uh, enhance the potentiality for globalization and internationalization of our degrees. I highly appreciate everybody who participated in this uh, uh, great event and looking forward to have uh, another uh, very soon uh, webinar in more specifics uh, with the same. Please, uh, Mohammed and our team from Galala, please select our students to continue and increase the size of students, the number of students who participate. This exposure for our students is highly, highly significant. Thank you very much, everybody, and looking forward to see you um, uh, uh, by any means, uh, either virtually through the webinars, or of course, you are welcome to Cairo and Gala. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and allow me to officially end this webinar and looking forward for more meetings and more cooperation. Thank you so much, everybody, for your attendance and your contribution. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>